y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at this 2007 XC70 Volvo. This Volvo is setting lean codes, so we need to take it for a test drive. Hop on in and let's go. Okay, so to get the data on this Volvo, we're going to use the eScan Elite. The eScan Elite is a scan tool that's going to be able to give me a lot of data really quick, and we're going to be able to run some really specialized uh, programs in order to help me diagnose this car rapidly. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at this. I can see I'm lean, and I've got fuel trim problems and control problems. I also want you to notice that the monitors haven't run. They say that we have three, that means the codes have been cleared. Now the car's running poorly and we have set some pending codes. They haven't matured, but they're pending on this, on this test drive. So let's go ahead and we'll open up the DTCs. So we have a misfire on four and a misfire on five, but the reason I'm here working on this car isn't for misfires. It's because the car is lean and they've been trying to fix a lean problem. In order to repair this car, they put a new fuel pump in it, a fuel pressure rail sensor, a wideband O2, and a known good used MAF sensor. The car still has a problem and it's still running poorly. So let's just diagnose the car and not worry about that we don't have mode six and we don't have the codes we really need to have. All I want to do is get the data. Let's get the data sets and make decisions based on the data. In order to do that, I want to come over and I want to get the sharpshooter. I want to pick long plus short term. That's full trim, total trim. We're going to start the test and now we're going to just start to drive the car. And as we drive the car, we're going to fill in these blocks. And right away, I can see we're adding a lot of trim. So in order to do this car, we've got some trim add going on here. So that's okay. So we're going to want to pull over again. We want to just look at the trims to see what we've got. So right here, we're adding 30%, uh, 40%, a lot of trim. So we got lots of trim here. So I don't want to run the trim now. I know we're trimming, but what we need to know, is this fuel related or air related? Is this a fuel problem, the fuel pump, the rail sensor, the injectors, or is this the mass air sensor, the programming, the computer? I need to separate these two systems. In order to do that, we need to come over and we're going to run a volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency tells me the air, how much air this engine can pump and if it's good or not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this. And we want to go ahead and we're going to have to come up. It's a little warmer than that. Everything else is good. Now we're going to run this VE test. The VE test is going to show the yellow trace, which is the actual reporting mass sensor. That's coming from the microprocessor onboard computer of the car. The red trace is a theoretical model. Now this is a boosted car. It's turbocharged. So the calculation in the e-scan won't be exact, but it'll be really close and it'll give us a good indication. But since the, the turbo spool at different times, it's really hard to give a real accurate calculation on this, but we'll be able to get a good enough one to get a real good understanding if this car has a problem or not. In order to do this, we're just going to start to roll, and then we're going to roll into the throttle and floor the throttle. And we're going to come over and we want to stop after we've done our pull. We're going to stop the test. Now, it's what I want to show you guys, is the yellow trace is the theoretical, or I'm sorry, the yellow trace is the actual air being reported and the red is theoretical. We're actually under reading the air a little bit, but do you see how we're really close? All the green squares are close. Okay, when we look at the fuel trim, it's bad from the bottom to the top and it's 40%. So the VE is really close. We're close on there and we can see that the two rails, the two sensor against theoretical is pretty close. So what this tells me is this isn't a air problem, this is a fuel delivery problem. Now I want to run one more test here and that's the VE compare. So right here we can see that the 
fuel trim climbed up to 50%, stayed at 50%, and then dropped back down to about 40%. But the air starts out and it's around zero, and then it's off about 15, 20%. So the air compared to the fuel, and right here at the top, notice that I'm within 10% of that air. The air is reading closer to being right, and the fuel delivery has got a lot of problem. So my problem right now, I'm thinking it's more in the fuel delivery than it is the air. I don't think the mass air has the issue or the computer that has the transfer function table to the mass air. That's where we take the voltage from the mass air and we normalize it into an air reading. The mass is reading too close. So if we come back over here, we can see that this whole these two towers are really close, but when we look at the trim, uh, they're 40, 50% off. That's a lot more on the trim than it is the air. So we need to go back to the shop and we need to run a couple more tests. So let's go back to the shop. We'll see you there. Okay, so the first test I want to run is with a five gas analyzer. We went on a test drive. We saw that the air reading from the mass air sensor is pretty close. The fuel trim though is 30, 40, 50 percent. That is a lot of trim. Now what I want to know is the wideband read correctly. If the wideband sensor read correctly, I'll have a lambda of one. If it didn't, then I'm worried about the wideband. If the fuel trims are correct, that means I'm going to be close to stoke or a lambda of one. If I'm pretty close to stoke, then the problem is in the delivery side. If the problem isn't close to stoke, then the problem is in the wide band or the feedback system side. So let's go ahead and get the tailpipe probe in so we can do the test. Now that we've got the five gas analyzer reading, I want you to notice that my lambda is 0.99, 0.98. It's within one, two, three percent of stoichiometric. A lambda of one would be stoke. That means that the feedback system with the wide band is working correctly. It's reading the air fuel mixture and it's making a heavy correction in trim, 30, 40, 50 percent trim readings. But the lambda is right. So if the lambda is right, that means that the feedback system is working. It had to correct something. So this problem is in the fuel delivery system. So now we know that this is in the fuel delivery system. We want to check the fuel pressure to see where the pressure is. So let's go ahead and do that test. Now we have the scan tool connected to this vehicle. I've also connected a hose so we can get a fuel pressure reading from the rail, an actual fuel pressure reading. So the first thing we want to do is I want to go into the scan tool. I want to go to PIDs. I want to clear all. Now I want to go to the fuel gauge where it says fuel pressure gauge. I want to make a note about this. If you guys are using an enhanced scan tool on a Volvo and on some of the other cars, this is an OBD2 scan tool. That's why it says gauge. It's what you're actually going to meter on the rail. If you use an enhanced scan tool, they automatically will add your barometric pressure to it. So roughly, this should be about 45 pounds plus atmosphere. So we're about 12, 13 pounds of atmosphere. That would be added on to the 45, 46 pounds I have. And sometimes that's really confusing. Always remember that in OBD2, you can't infer a value. So that's the actual pressure that I'm going to see in the rail. But if I was using an enhanced scan tool, you would have the atmospheric pressure or the absolute reading of the atmosphere added to that reading, and it's really confusing. So what I want to do now is I want to come in and I want to go to my scope. And I want to come over here and I want to go to multi-tool. Now here in multi-tool, I can see where I've got my KPA from the scan tool. This over here now will give me long-term, short-term, mass air, any of the readings from my scan tool, and I can compare them against the actual readings. So what we want to do now is we're going to go back over and we're going to set this up. 
So I need to come in here and we need to set this up for going to pick 300 pounds. I want to zero it. I haven't connected to this to the rail. So now we're going to come to meter and that's my reading and now if I get the fuel pressure we're going to connect the fuel pressure in and we can see that this is my fuel pressure reading. So now we've got the fuel pressure reading. Well our pressure is only 23 pounds. But when we come over here and we look at the scan tool, we have 315 kilopascals. Well, that's 45, 46 pounds. So what the computer is seeing is not what's in the actual rail. These two are, are not the same. Now, anytime you have anything that's this diverse, you've got to stop and fix it. So something with the way we're reading the fuel pressure to the computer is not what it actually sees in the rail. The computer thinks it has 45, 48 pounds. The pressure transducer thinks we got 23 pounds. This engine's so lean, that's why we've got 50% trim. It's trying to correct for low fuel pressure, guys. That's the problem. So what we're going to need to do now is we need to check this fuel pressure rail sensor. So we want to back probe that rail sensor and make sure that we've got a good power and ground to it. Because something's wrong with the fuel pressure rail sensor or the computer. But we've got a problem here to where the computer does not see the actual pressure in the rail. So let's go ahead and get into the, into the sensor. So the battery is in the rear of the car, so I always want to be at the battery negative. So that's right here. So we're going to get on there, and then we're going to go connect the scope up to the pressure sensor. Now that we've connected to the fuel pressure rail sensor, and we've got the data, we've got a ground, we've got five volts, and we've got two signals. But those signals aren't right because the pressure isn't, isn't correct. The computer thinks that this engine has 45 to 48 pounds of pressure, but we've really only got 25, 23 pounds of pressure in the rail. That's why the car is misfiring and running so bad. It's very lean because we don't carry enough rail pressure for the system to work correctly. So this is a new sensor that they put on. So what I want to do is I want to go in and see if he's got the old sensor and we're going to put that on to see to get a baseline of what's difference between these sensors, but I'm pretty sure that this brand new sensor is my problem. Let me go see if he's got that other sensor. Okay, I went in and I got the used rail pressure sensor. I put the used rail pressure sensor back in. Now we have 45, 40. It's going up and down because it's trying to relearn this rail pressure sensor because the voltages are very different from the other rail pressure sensor. But at least we're not at 22 or 27. We're at, you know, 50, 45, it'll learn it, and we're basically going to be looking for about 45. Now that I see that we can at least have the rail pressure, now is what we need to do is go redrive the car with the e-scan and let's see what other problems we have. That's the first one, so we took care of it. 
So let's go drive the car. Okay, we're on our second test drive after we've put the used rail pressure sensor back on. We took the brand new one off, we put the used one on, now we need to see what's going on and what else might be a problem. Now right away I can see a big difference. We have stoichiometric and we've got way less trim. So basically we've changed something here because we definitely have better fuel control, at least at idle. So now we need to check it under load because you always check your fuel trims under dynamic conditions. That means as I'm pulling the whole range of the pull. So to do that we're going to come to troubleshooter, pick long plus short total fuel trim and we're going to go ahead and start it. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drive it and we want to do the same pull. I can immediately see that the car is fixed because before we had 30 to 50 percent trims here. Now we have uh, two, three percent trim. So let's go ahead and we're going to talk about this guys. So basically if we look at this, we have zeros, one, two, we don't have 20 to 50 percent trim. The sensor sends out the wrong voltage. This car is about programming. The program structure takes a voltage from the sensor. Remember the voltage from a sensor is only a voltage until it's normalized. It's normalized in a transfer function table inside the microprocessor. That's where I take a voltage on a plot and I say this voltage is equal to this much pressure. That pressure then is what the microprocessor is targeting. Well if the voltage is wrong from the sensor then it slows the fuel pump down and so I don't have as much volume, I don't have as much pressure. The rail pressure only had 20-25 pounds in it. It should have 45 pounds. But the computer still thinks it's got 45 pounds because the voltage from the sensor is misreading. Always remember the voltage from a sensor is only a voltage because it outputs a voltage doesn't mean it's the right thing. It's got to be right for the program structure in the car. The brand new sensor is wrong. It's got the wrong voltages. Well the car's fixed, that's obvious. Now whatever was wrong with this car when they first started it, I don't know. But maybe the mass sensor, the wideband, or the fuel pump fix that problem. But that brand new sensor made this car run really bad. Maybe they fixed it with some of the other parts and then they put that on and now you're chasing your tail. You gotta know how to test these cars. You gotta know how to test each sensor you put on and how to find the problem always think through this stuff in a logical way and you'll always come up with the right answers. Use data. Data driven analysis. We went through the data, we checked each position, we did the next test based on that data and we've come to a good conclusion. We've got a used pressure sensor back in this car and it's fixed. So now we can return this to the customer. Follow a logical data path and you'll be successful troubleshooting in your base.